something that happened? We just have to make the daven. We should see tremendous, tremendous connection with authenticity of Chabad Chassidus, of the unbelievable light and the ore of the Balatanya and the great, great Sadiqim from Chabad, that that ore should come in and flow through all the students and that people should be able to live by the true message of Chabad and not get lost and in the misunderstandings of what the pristine teachings of Tanya are all about. So here we are, we're mamish inside the Heilige Heilige Tanya. And uh, we said yesterday an amazing analogy that anybody who comes to you and he says, Oh, you know, I can grasp the Lord. I can grab on to God. We said you run away as fast as you can in the opposite direction because that's as absurd, actually much more absurd than suggesting to say that when somebody makes an exceptionally intelligent comment in the world of Chachma, that yeah, I could grab onto that comment, I could, physically. Oh yeah, I could just like put that in my hand. No, you can't put that physical, conceptual idea in your hand. Your hand is meant to grasp physical items, not spiritual items. It's so distant to put a spiritual concept in your hand, it's, some will laugh at you. So that's like saying, taking your brain and even, or even the highest parts of existence, even the highest of the angels in the world of Chochmah, that silas, that could grab onto God's essence, it's as if it's like physicality up there compared to the essence of God. Okay? Weiter. Umasha Kodesh Bochu Nikro Chochem, the Kosov. So it's interesting. We say that, that God is so beyond Chochma. But we seem to see that the Torah refers to Hashem as a Chochem. I mean, if, if, if Chochma, if wisdom for God is like physicality, but from our perspective, it's the highest place of unification that we go to. So why does the Torah refer to God in those terms? So the reason is, What we're saying when we say that God is wisdom, we're not attaching that, so to speak, and limiting God by that. We're actually making God bigger. We're showing that God is the source. All wisdom of the world flows from God. Important words here. That from God comes supernal wisdom. The highest world of Chochmah Dat Silas. And that from there emanates wisdom through the worlds. The chen rachum, the chosid, that God is compassionate, God is kind. Al shem shuhu makor harachamim, that God is the source. That's what it means. He's the source of compassion. He's the source of kindness. The chen sharamidas, so to all the midas, shakulam nimshocho venetz lumemena yizborach, vederach veinyanam shocha vatsilas. The exact way in which these Midas and God is Mitzamtse, that God allows His light to come into all the worlds, that is something which is known to the great Kabbalists, to the Maskilim. And he actually goes into this in a piece here on the side. So he says like this. This is much more open, Kabbalistic thought. Soy that tzimtzum, the secret of the tzimtzum, is ba'or ein soif barachu. That's the first part. Is that the or ein soif, which is not even God. 
because you can't refer to God as anything. Even to say the or ain soif, the light that is infinite. And that ray of light, as it's being restricted in order to allow for different levels of finite creation to occur. And then after that, there's something called the tzimtzum of Odom Kadmoin, Ak. And then there's the Soid Hadikna, the secret of now different, this is all conceptual, there's nothing physical here, but parts of Adam Kadmain, which is called the beard, part of the entire revelation process of the creation goes through parts of Adam Kadmain. Shesoid kolat simtsumum litsamtsim or that the secret of all the tzimtzumim is to be mitzamtzim this light, she is labesh bechinas kalim, the yud spheris, to create vessels. Vihine acher shinis labesh or ein saif, the bechinas kalim, the chabad, after they finally come through all the worlds of Adam Kadmain, they come into kalim, into vessels of chabad, which is now in the world of Atsilas. Atsilas is the world of spheris. Then you could say what the Rambam says, which is what? God is the knower, God is the ability to know, and God is the knowledge itself. Whereas for us, those are three separate things. There's me, the knower, there's the object that is known, and there's the power that's invested in me to know things. But for God, it's all one. So even if the Rambam says that God is the knower, the knowledge, and the ability to know, how do you even say God is the... How do you even say anything after God? You say God... And, but don't worry, He's one with His wisdom. How do you even say God and His wisdom are one? Are you hearing this point? A, this is what the Balatan is saying, is that the Kabbalists agreed with the Rambam and they explained the Rambam was only talking to you from Chachmah Datzilas and below. The Rambam was never referring to the world above Chachmah Datzilas because that's the world of received Kabbalah. Whereas the Rambam, who went with a rational approach were of, of understanding, not in using Chakira and not using the Kabbalah, therefore is not going to speak to you about how Hashem is above Chachmah Silas, And therefore, when the Rambam says that God and His wisdom are one, and God is the knower, the knowledge, and the ability to know, that is relevant to talk about from Chachmah Silas and downwards. But above that, you can't say God and. You can't even talk that way. But below that, you could say God and is one. You always have to say, is one, no matter where you are in the sequence. But you can't even say the words, God and is one, above Chachmah Datsilas. L'fisha b'chines keilam Datsilas nasim neshama v'chies l'biya l'kola asher b'hem aval b'li tzimtzum v'hal basha nir l'el loisha klal loimer hu ha Without any tzimtzum and halbasha into spheres, you can't say God is the, the knowledge, the knower, and the known. You can't even speak that way. God is so beyond even speaking about from that place upwards. There's a place all the way up there called Radla, Reisha Deloyes Yoda, the beginning that cannot be spoken about. So they say that Rabbi Chimayar spoke more about the beginning that cannot be spoken about than anybody in the history of the world. The beginning that can't be spoken about. Well, that can't be known. 
can be spoken about, but it can't be known. There's the beginning that can't be known, Radla. But he was speaking about that place that we can't know it, but he's speaking about. Is it a Rosh Tevis or just? Yeah, Radla is Rosh Tevis. Reisha Deloy Isyoda. Like the beginning of the system. Beyond that, you can't, you can't know. But all of Kabbalah is going as far up to unity consciousness as you could know. And you don't even need LSD to get there. You can learn Tanya instead. It's about the highest place of unity consciousness that you could get to, and then you live that way. That's the mitzvah of Yichud Hashem, is to live that way all the time. Says the Rebbe, My le'ilui rav ad en keitz afilu mebechines vegeder chachma. Ashu bechines chachma nechsheves eitz lo yisbura ke bechines asiya gashmis. Until the point where there's so much halbasha, there's so much of that the ore has come into vessels, and we're talking about chachma datzilas, which is a world of just unity, but compared to who God is, it's like physicality. Hine, back up inside. Vihine ain lano asik benistaris. This is a, was a common phrase that was used over the generations by those that wanted to push away from learning the deeper part of Torah. We don't have involvement in the nistaris. Ach haniglo islanu. However, those that are revealed things, we do have access to. Here, though, the Balatanya is saying that when we're dealing with a mitzvah, which is a constant mitzvah of Yichud Hashem, where we have to know as much as we can know, here there's a mitzvah that we need to do. So we have to be Makayim, the mitzvah. So even though we don't have an Asik bin Astaris in all the secret world, but we're dealing with a mitzvah, we're dealing with you, know, you do have a responsibility. This is one of the 613. He's bringing us into one of the 613 mitzvahs, which is the mitzvah of Yichud Hashem. Ach, aniglo islanu. Lahamen emuna shleima. And even though we're going to see that there's certain things we can't fully grasp as we said, because that would be as absurd as saying that I could put Brian Keating's philosophy into my hand. And I could grab it physically. No, it's a different apparatus. But what we have is we can go as high as we can, as high as we can, through our minds, Chachmadat Silas. And we also have an unbroken tradition from Sinai that gives us additional information. What is that? De iu vegarmoi chad. That God and his midos and his attributes are one. Which means, even though that it says that God is the source of wisdom, God and that midah are one. He's one with that. De haina midos of shal ha-kadosh bochu v'ritsoinoi v'chachmosoi v'binosoi v'daitoi imahusoi v'atzmusoi all the Midas are one with God. So it's an interesting reality. We have God who is one within his character traits. God being the source of wisdom. And God himself is in that Midah. But at the same time, he's way beyond Chachma. So beyond, it's as if to say that Chachma is like physicality compared to him. So you have to hear that. We're, we're describing the unity within God. That God is one with Chachma, one with Chesed, God's kindness. And at the same time, he transcends. These are things that 
a Jew should be walking around thinking about. And that's what you guys walk around thinking about. We think about the, f the football game. Either one. But this would be the, this would be the right answer. It's a constant mitzvah. gam yisborach gam hasoga o lahasik and therefore because God is one with these midas, we also can't say we can grasp it fully, because God's essence is there. Lahasik ech misyached behem. How Hashem is one within the midah, but at the same time He transcends the midas. V'lachein nikru midosev shal hakodesh baruch hu shehen asfiras bezer hakodesh. That's why, like it says about the spheres, which are the midas of Atzilus, what are they called in the Zayar? They're called Raza de Mehemenusa. They're called the secret of Emuna. Because even though that we can grasp certain things, but at the same time that if God is one within Chesed, God and His Chesed are one. He's one. There's no difference. It's God and His Chesed are one, but at the same time God is way beyond chesed. That is a great secret of that reality. And we'll spend eternity going into, the, into that reality, how God and His chesed are one. There's no separation. But at the same time, God is, transcends His chesed. What does that mean? Like, what do you mean by beyond? Uh, God is not limited to his chesed. God's much bigger than his chesed. In the same way that God's much bigger than reality itself? Yeah. But here we're dealing with very supernal concepts of the essence of kindness. So God is one within that midah that he created, that sphere called kindness. And the whole world is built on kindness. But at the same time, he's not limited by that. He transcends that. He's beyond all of it. And that's a secret. That's a great secret. It's called Raza de Mehemenusa. Shehi ha'emuna shalamala minasecha. That's something that is a great secret. That's a secret that we're going to be investigating forever, for eternity. Similarly put that how God is in the world, but he also transcends the world. Can I interrupt the rabbi again to ask? Like, that sounds like really cool, obviously, but also like very lofty and inaccessible. And how can knowing this or how can I use it to make my life on a regular basis better? Well, first of all, you just have a mitzvah to think about this. So that's the Aleph base of it, is that there's a constant mitzvah of knowing the reality of God's unity. How does that practically help you be a better person? If, if you are so in alignment with that reality, uh, you probably would never want to do a veras. You'd see how God permeates every bit of existence in life. You'd feel empowered that God is with you. He's in this world, he's beckoning to you, speaking to you all the time. But also, you won't make, God forbid, God into an idol by limiting him to this world. Because at the same time, you know that he transcends and he's beyond. So at the same time as you feel you have a connection to Hashem here, this is very important practically for someone, is that if they felt that God is only beyond all the worlds, then they could feel very abandoned, they could feel that God is far from them, He's not part of my life. And many people, that's their experience of God, is He's far away, He's the beyond, the soiv of kol alman. But that's very sad, because God is right here. So if I know that Hashem is right here, it means He's involved in my life. But if He's only right here, then that could become idol worship. Because I'm limiting God, I'm putting him into physicality and limiting him in a physical way. So that creates a world of idols. God forbid, that creates a world of 
of going to angels and pulling strings to try to get whatever things I want done. I have to realize that God is in the same time in this world, therefore very close to me, but at the same time transcends. And whatever I know about you, Hashem, there's always going to be more. And it makes the journey very, very exciting. And really, you should, everything in life should be this model. I, I talked about this a lot, is that when you relate to your wife, so you should re relate to her as, is that there's so much depth about you that I can know, but there's also there's a beyondness about you that there will always be more that I could know. And I want to keep knowing you deeper and deeper in, in the beyondness of you. And if I have one without the other, it's, it's very, very unhealthy, either direction. If you're only beyond, so then it's a very, very cold relationship because like you're just beyond. I, never, I don't even know you. Like I could, I could never know, so I don't even really try because you're just too beyond. But at the same time, if you feel that what you see is what you get and that's all there is to the person, then you've limited that person so tremendously, you've boxed them in. And sadly, that happens a lot. That side is that I, I know everything about you. And therefore, you, you never leave more openness to the, to the beyondness of the relationship. A lot of times this happens with parents and kids. The kids go in, they start learning and growing in yeshiva. And the parents still see them as the, you know, you're the same guy. They don't realize that there's a beyondness that they've developed. They're still the same. I, you know, I know everything about you. I change your diapers and you know, I know who you are. So they'll see them as the same person in that box. So Hashem is hinting to us that there's the part of Hashem that comes in, in, in a very rich way into the world and then in a beyond way. And I have to use that as an analogy and a model of all my relationships. One more follow-up? Sure. How do... I feel like it's much more difficult to do that with God than for people. Sort of like not just have it be like this lofty, like giant, inaccessible thing. How do I... With Hashem, you're saying it's yeah. more difficult? So start struggle? working on it. Hasidus is like classic which speaks about Hashem very much in the world. Th this is the mitzvah, is Yichud Hashem, is the Hashem's involvement in the world. This is a big part of the mitzvah of Amuna, is learning about Hashem's very rich involvement in the world. When you speak about miraculous stories of tzaddikim, when you speak about miracles, Miracles are a way of showing Hashem's direct hand involved in the world. These are the parshas of, of the plagues of coming out of Mitzrayim. When Hashem is manipulating this world, you see that He's, he's not oh, far from the world, He's right here in the world. Part of the mitzvah of Amunah is what's called Zecher Yitzis Mitzrayim. Why in the mitzvah of Amunah, Anuchi Hashem Aleikecha, I am the Lord your God that took you out of Egypt. So the Rishonim asked the question, why didn't God say, I'm the Lord your God that created heaven and earth? Took you out of Egypt? Why is that the big? Because I'm the Lord your God who's involved in your life. We were there in Egypt. We weren't there when the world created. So that's one answer, which is a very good answer. Even though we have an unbroken tradition through the Torah, that, I, that, that you could see logically and rationally God is the creator of the world. But that still wouldn't give me the sense of you're involved in my life. You listen to my struggles. Leaving Egypt was the Jews cried out to Hashem and Hashem listened to the cries and came and literally dismantled the evil of Egypt. Precise, detail by detail. Everything that they tried to do to cover up the reality of God, God revealed himself to the Egyptians in detail. So when you think about the miracles, you see Hashem in the details right here. 
Also, another good thing to do, we'll end with this, is to, to write down little stories of Hashem in your life. Have a wonderful day. We should be zayach the Mishitz at King Bimher of Yamin. Amen. Amen. Chabis.